Lux presents Hollywood. The Lux Radio Theater brings you Jimmy Stewart and Joan Blondell in Destry Rides Again. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight we're happy to announce as regular producer of the Lux Radio Theater the appointment of Mr. William Keeley, who has been our guest producer several times in weeks past. Prior to three years of active service as colonel in the Army Air Corps, Mr. Keeley directed such screen hits as The Fighting 69th, Each Dawn I Die, George Washington Slept Here, The Man Who Came to Dinner, and a score of other stage and screen successes. We are happy to add his talent, experience, and producing skill to our regular Monday evening broadcasts. Mr. William Keeley. (laughs) Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. And I'd like to say first how happy I am to be able to be with you in this theater every Monday night. It so happens that this week is the 25th anniversary of radio. And celebrating that event we welcome back to the airways and to the Lux Radio Theater a gentleman we've missed for almost five years, Jimmy Stewart. He appears in one of his favorite roles as the soft-spoken, gentlemanly guardian of the law in Universal's Western melodrama, Destry Rides Again. Co-starred with Jimmy is another favorite of this theater, Joan Blondell, for whom I've always felt a warm regard since Joan acted in the very first play that I produced on Broadway. Now, our story tonight takes us to the early West, those halcyon boomtown years when life was lived from day to day and gold slipped easily through the fingers, when a fine-tooth comb cost $7 and a sewing needle twice that much, while a cake of soap, if you could get it, was worth its weight in gold dust. So if the bells of the early West were proud of their complexions, it's a credit to the laws of chance. Nowadays, I'm sure that Western beauties by the thousands, like so many lovely women everywhere, attribute their smooth complexions to Lux toilet soap. And if Destry's descendants ever ride again, I trust it will be to the corner store for a cake of Lux. The curtain now rises on our first act. Starring Jimmy Stewart as Tom Destry and Joan Blondell as Frenchie, with Leo Cleary as Wash Dimsdale. It lies on the prairie like a glittering jewel, the tranquil little town of Bottleneck. Here the honest, God fearing cattleman tends his lowing herd and after a day of honest toil, repairs to Johnny Kent's tavern for a friendly glass of ginger beer and a round or two of checkers. Yes, all is peaceful and serene on this typical bottleneck evening. Seeking sanctuary? That's quite a brawl. Uh, a convenient brawl. Oh? Bugs and Jip started it, so no one would hear the shots upstairs. Oh, I see. Uh, Clara? Yes, ma'am? They were you all. Change later. Yes, ma'am? Uh, did Kent come down with you, Frenchie? Uh-uh, he's still upstairs doing a little arithmetic. Arithmetic? Yeah, he owns Claggett Ranch now. Well, well, that gives him a solid strip of land right across the valley. Right straight across. And from now on, every time the cattlemen drive their herds across the valley, it's going to cost 25 cents a head. Hmm, sounds reasonable to me. You know, that's what I like about Johnny Kent. He's not greedy. No, all he wants is everything. Here, yeah, well, let's see. 400,000 steers at 25 Don't cents Don't knock your a brains hitch. out, Mayor. Kent will figure it out. Uh, <clears throat> well, I trust he'll also figure out a way of removing the body of the uh, unfortunate Mr. Claggett. Claggett's not dead. He's only mad. Hey, what are you talking well, about? Well, shut up and listen. They had a poker game up there. Claggett bet everything he owned, including his ranch. 
naturally, he lost. Naturally? When he started to yell, he was framed. They threw him out. And who was shot? The sheriff. Sheriff Watson? Claggett went running to Watson. Watson accused Kent. And, well, the boys resented it. Mm, he's a fine man, the sheriff. Fine man. Well, start thinking about a new appointment. And I've got just the right man in mind. And if he happens to be sober enough to get on his feet, okay. I'll... Why, Wash Dimsdale, of course. The town drunk and you out of your... Oh, I see what you mean, Mayor. I see what you mean. Quiet! Quiet, everybody! Will you shut up? Okay, now. Johnny Kent here's got something to say. Ah! Having a good time, everybody? That's what I like to see in my place. Well, folks... We got some important news from Mayor Slade. Uh, Fellow citizens, our esteemed Sheriff Watson has suddenly been called out of town on uh, urgent business. Uh, He'll be gone permanent. Uh, Therefore, I hereby appoint as our new sheriff that paragon of courage, the pride of our community, Mr. Washington Dimsdale. (laughs) All right, somebody, get him up here. There he is, Johnny, under the table. He's coming, Johnny. Here comes the new sheriff. Whatever become of him? Oh, hello, Frenchie. What are we cheering for? For you, Wash. You're the new sheriff. Hooray for the new sheriff. Uh, Wash? That's right, Wash. Congratulations. (laughs) Drinks on the house, everybody. And a fresh bottle for the new sheriff. Come on, Wash. Aren't you going to drink? Frenchie, am I really the sheriff? Sure you are. Then no, I'm not going to drink. No, sir. Man's got to choose between the bottle and the badge. You hear that, you pack of no good skunks? Listen to me. Gonna be law and order in Bottlenecker. I'm putting the whole town in jail. And if you need any help, I'll be a deputy. No, I wouldn't have you. I want a deputy like I used to be. What? When were you ever a deputy? When was I? Why, when Tom Destry was sheriff, that's when. You think you're tough and honor. You ain't nothing like there was when Destry was my boss. Well, Destry's been dead for five years, what? Well, maybe so, but young Tom ain't dead. And his daddy brought him up to be the toughest fighting man that ever growed up in the West. I'm sending for him right now. And when he gets here, Destry will ride again. <laughs> How many times do I have to tell you? Take it easy on those bumps. Uh, pull your head in. Just wait till we get to bottleneck, that's all. Jack, please. The trip will be over soon. I don't mind the bumps, really. Well, I do. And if he don't take it easy on... Mr. I'll... Destry. Yes, ma'am. Please don't mind my brother, Mr. Destry. He's always threatening to do something. You know, I had a friend once named a Stubbs. He was sort of like you, Mr. Tendall. Huh? He's always threatening to fill somebody full of holes. Well... Well, folks say now that Stubbs is holding up one of the prettiest tombstones in the cemetery. Very funny. This gun here ain't no ornament, and I'm pretty good with it. Yeah, so was my friend Stubbs. Meaning what? Well, just you ought to be careful about who you meet up with, that's all. For a deputy sheriff, mister, you got some mighty peculiar ideas. But they do make sense, Jack. You know, maybe you ought to take up a hobby, Mr. Tyndall, like me. See here, wood carving. You'd be surprised the genuine rage you can work off just by whittling away at a little piece of wood. Wait a minute. Are you sure your name's Destry? Yeah, folks are always asking me that. Your father was a wonderful man, Mr. Destry. Yes, he was. Yes, he was. I guess I'm different. I'll say you're different. Yeah, my father got shot in the back. And there are a lot of things I do, Mr. Tyndall, just to avoid getting shot in the back. It's coming! It's coming! The stage is coming! Wash, is he really coming? Is Destry really coming? Of course he is. He is my new deputy. A Jiminy, Wash, you sure look like a real sheriff. Well, thank you, son. Uh, Lily Bell! Lily Bell! What do you want, Wash? The coach is coming. You got his room ready? Sure, I got it ready. Good. Get ready, everybody. Here he comes. Destry is coming to bottleneck. All right, driver, I warned you. I said, where do we get to bottleneck? Yeah, and what are you going to do about it? Just this. Oh, I... Hey, look out, he's pulling a gun. Duck stranger, he's going to... He's going to what? <laughs> you see that? You see that? Knocks him down and shoots the gun right out in his head. <laughs> Maybe that'll teach you to drive a little slower. Sure, sure, mister. Sure. Well, folks, that's just a small sample of what you're going to get from now on. Tom Dusty, welcome to bottleneck, Tom. I'm Wash. Sorry, partner. My name's Tyndall. 
You you ain't Dusty? He's still in the coach. You can come out now. Tom! Tom! Oh, hello, Wash. You haven't changed a bit. Well, get out of there, Tom. I'll be right with you, Wash, as soon as I help the lady here. Now, if you'll just hold my birdcage, Mr. Dusty. Oh, and my parasol. Yes, ma'am. Oh, no, oh, look no. Look at him. A canary bird. A parasol. <laughs> Tom, will you put down that darn bird? Well, thank you very much, Mr. Destry. Not at all, ma'am. Well, you must be Mrs. Destry. How do you do? No, no, wrong again, here. Oh, I'm Janice Tyndall. Oh, well, you'll be needing rooms, too. Come on, I'll show you across. Oh, thank you very and much. And you come on, too, Mr. Destry. You'll be wanting a cup of tea or something. Oh, tea? <laughs> you crazy? Come on, Tom. We're getting over to the saloon. Now look here, Tom You're making an impression on this town That's got to be eradicated right now But don't you think first impressions Are darn fool things to jump at? Around here you got to jump first You don't live long You know, what you're saying Reminds me of a friend of mine And he woke up in the middle of the night And he saw a great big hand coming at him A hand? Yeah, yeah so he got out his gun, and he aimed, and he shot a hole right through his own foot. No. Yes, he did. Now, he shouldn't have gone by that first impression, should he? Well, he was just a darn fool. You... Oh, come on in. This here's the saloon. <laughs> Shut up, everybody, and pay attention. Shut up, Well, here he is, folks. I want you all to meet my new dipper day. Thomas Jefferson Destry. Hello there. Howdy. Destry, my name's Kent. Howdy. And this is Piggy Slade, our mayor. And, uh, oh, Frenchie. Frenchie. Coming. Here's a girl you got to meet, Mr. Destry. Frenchie, meet the new deputy. A deputy or a beanpole? Say, uh, Mr. Destry, how's the weather up there? How's the weather up there? Yeah, everybody says that when they see me. Come on, everybody. Let's have a drink to the new deputy. Oh, uh, Destry, I think you and me ought to have an understanding right off. Oh, good. I'm all for folks understanding each other. So I'll start by telling you that I've got a hobby. You have, huh? Well, mine's carving napkin rings. What's your hobby? Collecting guns. Deputy sheriff's guns. Whenever I meet one, I ask him for his guns. I ask him real nice. Uh-huh. Well, I'm afraid this here's one time you're going to be disappointed. You mean I have to take them from you? If you can. If I can. Hold on, hold on now. Hold on. Don't get excited. I'm just trying to tell you I ain't got any guns. See you here? Just what kind of a deputy are you? Now, if, if I had a, had a gun on me, why, uh, one of us might have got hurt. And it might have been me. And, uh, I wouldn't have liked that. Would I? <laughs> <laughs> Look at me, fellas. I'm a canary. Tweet, tweet. Oh, my goodness. Where's my parasol? <laughs> now, cut it out. <laughs> if anybody starts picking on you, Mr. Despy, just you come to Uncle. I'll remember that, Mr. Kent. Good. What do you have to drink? How about a nice glass of milk? Yeah, yeah, I think I will. A nice glass of milk. <laughs> and here's a present for you, Mr. Despy. A bucket of water. <laughs> <and a> mop. <laughs> sure. He wants to clean up bottleneck, doesn't he? Here you are, deputy. And don't forget the corners. So this here's our office, huh, Wash? Yeah, yeah, this is it. Oh, Tom, Tom. What's the matter? Tom Destry's boy, the laughing stock of the town. Looks bad, huh? I told Lily Bell you won't be needing that room after all. You're leaving on the next stagecoach. But I, I sort of like it here, Warren. How are you going to face anybody after what you took from Kent and from Frenchy? Well, what do you expect me to do? I expected you to be like your pa, to roar in blasting behind your shooting irons. What happened? Didn't have any. Why? Well, I don't believe in them. Say, Wash, open that bag there. Huh? Go on, go on, open it. You'll find two guns in there. You mean you... Tom! Well, here, strap them on, boys. No, 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 no. My pa had these on, Wash, the day he got shot in the back. They didn't seem to do him much good, did they? That's one reason why I don't believe in them. What in tarnation do you believe in? Law and order. Without guns? Without them. Well, if that don't beat all, get out. Oh, Tom, don't you see? The only reason they made me sheriff was to have somebody they could kick around. But I was aiming to fool them, to do things right. That's why I sent for you. Instead, you fool me. Now, you will fool them, Wash. We'll fool them together. Now, don't you see? When you shoot it out with them, some, somehow or other, they get to look like heroes. But if you put them behind bars, then they look little and cheap the way they ought to look. 
and it serves as a warning to the rest of them. Oh, go on home, Tom, and I'll get back to being the town drunk. That's all I'm good for. No, you're not going back to being the town drunk, and I'm going to stay here and do this job I come for. My pa did it the old way, I'm going to do it a new way. If I don't prove to you I'm right, I'll get out of town quick enough. But first, you've got to give me a chance. No. You've got to give me a chance. No, no. no. Come on. Now, come on. Swear me in. Oh. All right. Raise your right hand. You, Thomas Jefferson, justly swear to uphold the law and do your duty and everything else that goes with it? Yep, yep, I do. Yep. All right, then. Here. Here's your badge. Just don't let anybody see you wearing it. No guns. Well, where are you going? I'm taking a walk. I'll probably get drunk. I think I'll go along with you, then. You just get into trouble, Tom. I'm warning you. What's uh, this here, the main street here? Yes. Yeah. Nice hardware store over there. Yeah, yeah, it is. Got some mighty fine boy knives in stock. Boy knives, an elegant weapon. Wash. No. 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 No, I was afraid you wouldn't be interested. Tom, look here. You see this hitching pole soaked through and through with the blood of Sawtooth McGee. He objected to a petticoat his neighbor's wife was wearing, and they fit to a draw, both buried in the same grave. Sawtooth and the petticoat. Sawtooth and the neighbor. Oh. Also, four innocent bystanders. Now you've got to listen to reason, Tom, or get out of town. You know, I had a friend once, used to collect postage stamps. And he always said the one good thing about a postage stamp, it always sticks to one thing till it gets there. Well... I'm sort of like that. Hey, Wash, wait a minute. I've been looking all over for you. Now, what is it? This here crate, Wash. Come to the express office day before yesterday for Sheriff Watson. Well, what's in it? Appears to be rabbits in it. And I got to get them off my hands. When that crate come, there was only two of them. Now look. Well, rabbits is like that. Yeah. Say, uh, where did Sheriff Watson go? I don't know nothing about nothing. Well, you better start learning about rabbits because I just give you these. Now get. Hey, thanks, Sheriff. I'll get them. Pretty playful, aren't you? Yeah, we're full of liquor and full of fine. Hold my horse here, creepy. Yeah, yeah Bugsy, he didn't mean nothing by it. Don't start no trouble. Trouble? Why, we just want to see the new deputy dance. Come on, Destry, dance. <laughs> <laughs> I said yeah. dance. Now, now, wait a minute. Hold on now. Say, uh, Bugsy, does. Look like pretty good guns you got there. You mind if I heft them a little? Well, I guess you can't hurt yourself, Sonny, just hefting them. <laughs> yeah, it's a nice weight there, yeah. You know, aside from being pretty ornaments, a fella can have a lot of harmless amusement out of these here toys. Now, take, for instance, them knobs on the top of that sign down the street there. Yeah, where? Down the block there, right there. Now, watch them. Don't see him anymore, do you? Yes, sir. These guns are all right. They're all right. Tom! Tom, we ain't seen nothing like that since... Now, the next time any of you fellas start any of this promiscuous shooting around the streets, you're going to land in jail, you understand? Mm-hmm. But, Whatever. Deputy, we, we were just... All right, just so you understand. Now, you heard me. Yeah. Come on, Wash. Well, I... Can't believe my eyes. And you walking around here condemning the use of firearms. Now, Wash, listen. Where did you say Sheriff Watson went to? Well, I didn't say well, he certainly left your office in a mess. And those rabbits, it appears he clean forgot about the rabbits. Uh, what about him? Uh, rabbits is easy to forget. I know, but there's something wrong here. I, I, oh, I don't understand. Oh, you don't understand. understand. You don't understand. Green snakes and pink elephants, them I can understand. But you... Oh, you got to listen to me, Tom. All right, Wash. Go ahead. As though I ain't been telling you. You got to behave like Where's I expect you to behave. Where's the sheriff? He's out of town and when... Uh, wait a minute, that's me. Why, she got to help us. she got to come to the ranch uh, now. Sure, boy, sure. Wait, say you're Thomas Jefferson Destry, ain't you? Yeah, that's right. Well, I'm Eli Whitney Claggett. Well, I'm glad to know you. Well, hey, gosh, you heard about your pa in my life whenever we play sheriffs and engines. Well, I'm always your pa. Well, you couldn't do better, son. Now, uh, what's the matter here? Oh, they come to take a ranch away, Johnny Kent and his gang. We've been holding them off so far, but we ain't got much ammunition left. Pa said for me to sneak into town and get the sheriff. Good work, son. Um, murdering thief, I'll fill him so oh, full of lead that... Wait a minute. How come Kent's trying to take Claggett's ranch? Because he won it from Claggett in a crooked poker game. Uh-huh. Let's see. Well, it seems like to me we're wasting time here. Come on, sheriff. We got some work to do. <laughs> In 
just a minute, we'll bring you Act Two of Destry Rides Again, starring James Stewart and Joan Blondell. And now here's Libby Collins, our Hollywood reporter, with news about the stars. Which star are we turning the spotlight on tonight, Libby? A very famous and lovely one, Mr. Keeley, Merle O'Bron. Ah, uh, there's glamour for you. I understand Merle O'Bron's especially lovely in her new picture, Universal's This Love of Ours. Oh, yes. She plays the romantic role of a French music hall entertainer who becomes a great lady. And speaking of glamour, Mr. Keeley, wait till you see Merle Obron in some of the gowns she wears in the picture. There's a dusty pink evening gown embroidered all over with pink crystal beads. Mm-hmm. Well, that's just the thing for a dark-haired beauty, I'd say. <laughs> yes, Merle is famous for her perfect costumes. But lovely as she is, she has some very practical hints for women everywhere. Every woman, she says, is born with a certain amount of glamour. But it has to be developed, just as a diamond has to be polished to bring out the sparkle. Lux girls know about that, don't they, Libby? They certainly do, Mr. Kennedy. They've discovered what a wonderful difference it makes when you find the right complexion care. Merle Oberon spoke about that, too. Soft, smooth skin, she said, is so important. She told me active lather facials with Lux soap have always worked for her. Won't you tell us, Libby, how Miss Oberon takes her Lux soap facials? Well, here's exactly how she does it, Mr. Kennedy, in her own words. I cover my face generously with a Lux soap lather and work it well in. Then I rinse with warm water, splash on cold, and pat with a soft towel to dry. The Lux soap lather's so creamy, it feels like smoothing beauty in. I wouldn't trust my skin to any other care. That's the way nine out of ten other lovely screen stars feel, too. They've found daily active lather facials really make skin softer, smoother. In recent tests of these beauty facials... Actually, three out of four complexions improved in a short time. This tip from Merle Oberon may help you win lovelier skin. Why not try it? Get some gentle white Lux toilet soap, Hollywood's own beauty soap, tomorrow. Mr. William Keeley now presents our second act. We continue with Destry Rides Again, starring James Stewart as Tom Destry and Joan Blondell as Frenchie. <laughs> Johnny Kent and his men have come to take over the Claggett Ranch, and they're doing it in the usual Kent manner. But behind the stout walls of the ranch house, Sam Claggett and his wife have managed thus far to hold their own. Stop that shooting, you hear me, Kent? Stop that shooting! Hold it, boys, hold it! Well, hello, Sheriff, and Mr. Destry. Put down your guns in there, Claggett, I'm taking over here. That was... And stay in the house. Kent, I said we was to have law and order around here. Certainly. So do your duty and get those people out of my house. Your house? Maybe you better look at this paper. I ain't interested in no documents. You mosey on out of here before I start blasting. Mr. Kent, uh, can I see that paper? Certainly. Uh -huh, and this signature here, is that Claggett? Well, you don't think I'd forge it, do you? All right, come on, Wash. We'll go inside and talk to Claggett. Send the Asian, Tom. Who are you trying to protect around here? See, Mrs. Claggett, it's like I just told your husband. Deputy or no deputy, we ain't giving up our ranch. I'd sooner hang that crowd out there than let them have this ran ranch, but your your husband signed the paper, ma'am, and it give, gives Kent a perfect legal right to the property, don't, doesn't it, Wash? Uh, sure it does. way we're operating now. I told you about that poker game. I was winning when that Frenchy girl spilled a pot of coffee in my lap. While I was cleaning it off, they switched cards on me. I don't doubt that, but... It's your word against theirs. They'd swear themselves blue in the face again, you Sam. Mm -hmm. Yes, I'm afraid you folks are over a barrel. Fine goings on when the law takes the side of cheats. No, I'm sorry, Mrs. Claggett, but you folks stick around town. Now, we'll figure out some way to get this ranch back for you. That's what Sheriff Watson said the night he disappeared. Watson couldn't do nothing about it. Everybody knows that he left town sudden. Yeah, I'll bet he did. I'll bet he did. Huh? No, nothing, nothing. Well, help these folks get their stuff together, Wash. I'm going to have a talk with what about it, Destry? The ranch is yours. They're packing up now. Well, good. I can see you and me are going to get along fine. Well, we'll have to enforce the law, don't we? <laughs> we sure do. <laughs> we sure do. Uh, you hear him, fellas? And I thought he was dumb. <laughs> I'm coming. I'm coming. Yes, sir? My goodness, if it ain't the law. 
Uh, would you tell Miss Frenchie I'd appreciate seeing her on some official business, please? Oh, yes, sir. Miss Frenchie? Yeah, what is it? Say, Miss Frenchie, that tall drink of water's here oh, on he is. fishy business. He is, is he? Will you tell him for me that I, I... Hold on, hold on now, ma'am. Hold on now. I just come over to apologize. Apologize for what? Well, for not realizing who's the real boss of Bottleneck. My coffee, Clara. Yes, sir? Don't let me interfere with your dinner, ma'am. It's breakfast. Oh, excuse Does me. Does he get some too, miss? Well, I don't mind if I do join you in a cup. So you found out what's good for yourself, huh? Yes, I sort of figured I'd better use a little common horse sense. Now, of course, I could have come barging in here with all sorts of rumors, like a couple of rumors I just heard about you. I'm supposed to say what rumors? Yeah, you're supposed to do that. And if you would say that, why, I'd say that the talk is that you do more than sing down at Kent's saloon. You sort of take part in crooked poker games, cheating folks out of their ranch. Who said that? Oh, just a rumor, just a rumor. Of course, you wouldn't have anything to do with anything like that. Here's your coffee. Oh, thanks, thanks. I better be careful of this, too. I wouldn't want to have it spilt in my lap. Get out. Would I? Get out, dear. Get out. Oh, now, hold your fire. Hold your fire. I'll go. Just uh, put that lamp down, will you? There. That's fine. Now, and just one more thing. You know, uh, I've seen hundreds like you, all the way from Jacksonville to Sacramento. You all think easy pickings will last forever. You better mind your own business, Mr. Destry. You're heading for trouble. Trouble is I do as I like in this town. Anyone who gets in my way is taken care of. Like they took care of Sheriff Yeah, Watson? just like they took care... That's just what I thought. I don't know what you're talking about. You better keep your mouth shut and get out of town before it's too late. Oh, come on now. I don't think you're half as bad as you make out to be. Well, never mind what I am. I'll bet you got kind of a pretty face underneath all that paint. Look, I'll, uh, I'll show you what I mean. Take your hand off. Sure, sure. All right. But why don't you wipe it off someday and have a good look? That's a wonderful face. Figure out how you can live up to it. So long. Clara. Yes, sir? Bring me a mirror. And a towel. Yes, ma'am. Well, that's the most peculiar acting man I ever did see. But he's got personality. Mm-hmm. He sure has. <laughs> Sam, worry one bit, Miss Claggett. You can stay here as long as you want. Well, I sure appreciate it, Lily Bell. Still and all, if we could have kept on shooting this afternoon instead of sending for them. No, Mag, they had the law on their side like the we... The law. I've got something to say about that. Oh, Jack, please. It's none of your affair. It is my affair, Janice. That rat Kent's charging me two bits for every head of cattle going through this valley. It's time decent people joined up and got rid of them cutthroats. Well, you better start in with this watery-eyed sheriff here and that, that gun-shy lady-fingered deputy of his... Come on in, Destry. I saw you standing there. I wouldn't have said that, Tyndall. Well, turn your back on me. You... Oh, Jack, please. You heard me, Destry. I ain't paying one cent to move my cattle. Now, what are you aiming to do? Well, at present, nothing. That's what I thought. But I'll do something if I have to take the law in my own hands. Nobody's going to set themselves up above the law around here, you understand? Listen, I've, I've got something to say to you. I think maybe I could uh, illustrate it better if I told you a story. I used to have a friend. Oh, another one, Tom? Yep, another one. He was uh, an opera singer. But he went into the cement business. And one day he fell into the cement. And now instead of singing in the new opera house at St. Louis, he's just part of the cornerstone. <laughs> he should have stuck to his trade. You better stick to yours. Tom, where are you going? Uh, up to my room. Time to get ready for supper. Tom, how can you talk of eating at a time like this? Because I'm hungry. Come on. Well, there's your room. Shh, shh. Open. Listen, there's somebody in there. Huh? Step a step aside here. Oh. Good evening. Good evening. Doubtlessly, you are wondering what I am doing in your room. Well, uh, you may believe this or not, but I am waiting for a stagecoach. <laughs> Look, guy. Uh... Aren't you, aren't you Lily Bell's husband? Sure, Tom. That's just Callahan. Callahan, Callahan. I am a Stavrogin of Bardashev. Everybody calls him Callahan, Tom. Easy to say. Yeah, well, uh, I don't mind who you are, but uh, what are your legs doing in my pants? 
I find this all very awkward. Oh, he loses his pants regular, Tom. They win him off in him at poker. Then Lily Bell locks him up in his room. <laughs> mm, ah, this time I outsmart Lily Bell. I climb through the window, across the roof, and zuff, I find some pants. Yeah, but they're my pants, so uh, come on, off with them now. You mean now? Now, yeah. Well, the whole world is against me. Oh, now, wait a minute now. I might be able to make a deal with you. How well do you know this country around here? Like a field mouse. There isn't a twig, a tree, a bush. Well, that's that, all right. That's good enough. All right, the pants are yours if you do a little job for me. Agreed. What can I lose? Only a job. Command me. I want you to find something. Ah, I am a weasel, a hawk. I have the memory of an elephant, the strength of a... Thunderation, he's not asking for a zoo. Uh, Only a bloodhound who can keep his mouth shut. I shall be a bloodhound, sniffing and silent. What's missing? The body of Sheriff Watson. Pardon me while I give you back your pants. (laughs) Tom, what do you want to find Watson's body for? Because you can't prove a murder without a corpse. And I sort of think Callahan would make a pretty good second deputy. A deputy? Deputy Stavrogin. Order me where you will, to Siberia. Come on, then. We're going down to Kent Salon. It's me, Frenchie. Open up. Make it snappy, Johnny. I got a song coming up. I know that. Look. Did you have any callers at your house today? Men, women, or children. You start acting smart with me, and I'll start slapping you around. Did you or didn't you? Who, for instance? Destry, for instance. Why not? That's better. What was the conversation? All of it. All of it. Well, let me see. I said, hello? Uh, no, he said, hello. And I said... I don't feel like kidding, Frenchie. What did he come for? Because he's a gentleman. He came to apologize. And that's all? All he had time for. He was in a hurry to go, just like you are now. Okay. But if I ever catch you stacking them on me, I'll personally put out the lights so I don't know you from anyone else in the game. Get my dress, Clara. My, my, he just ain't got no personality at all, is he? All right, now, Callahan, stay outside here, right outside the saloon, and follow any of Kent, Kent's gang to come out. I wish you'd tell me what you're up to, Tom. Well, we can't find the missing body, can we? Well, the next best thing, have them find it for us. Please, let's go home. You do as you're told. Now, wait a minute. Who's that? They're, they're on the porch of the saloon. No, it's Frenchy, pacing up and down on the porch. Well, here goes. Get over here, Callahan. We'll wait for the shadows. Got a match, Deputy? Oh, hello. Yeah, yeah, sure. Thanks. Well, you've been arguing with somebody again, huh? How'd you know? Well, I read a book once that said that women always look their best in the peace and quiet that follows a storm. Very good. But it would have been a lot nicer if you'd thought of that yourself. Well, as a matter of fact, it did. You won't take my advice, will you? You mean leave town? Uh-uh. uh-uh. Here, I got something for you. What's it? What, a rabbit's foot, huh? Yeah, take it. And keep away from dark corners. I'll see you inside, maybe, huh? Got to do my number. Yeah, sure, sure. I'll be right here. See you. Wait a minute, Destry. I see now why you don't need guns. You do? Yeah. Why I can't get my cattle through. And I'm taking them through in spite of you, Kent, or anybody else. I'd think twice if I were you, Tyndall, before I started trespassing. You're cutting in on Kent two or three different ways, aren't you? Sorry you made me do that, Tyndall. Mighty sorry. Slade. Evening, son. Uh, sit down. Frenchie sure sings a song, doesn't she? Uh, she sure does. Yeah. I'm kind of hoping I'd find you here, Mayor. I want to talk to you. Not a private talk, Mr. Destry, or is it? No, 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 no. Why don't you join us, Ken? Thanks, I will. Well, I'll tell you both what was on my mind. I just don't think we're getting the kind of cooperation around town we should be getting. No. No. No, it seems every time the sheriff or me asks a question, folks just shut up or walk away like they never heard it. Well, my guess is they just don't cotton to sheriffs around here. Well, you're probably right, yeah. Sheriff Watson wasn't very popular either, was he? Meaning what? Well, nothing special. Hey, Frenchie, 
Over here. Do you like my number, Mr. Destry? Oh, yeah, I like that. Yeah. Well, good. Then you can buy me a drink, huh? Sure, fine. Yeah, that's the idea of the song, you know. Gets me free drinks. Well, I sort of get it, Doc. Yeah. About what's on your mind, Destry, I'm telling you now. What's in left town? Well, that's what I say. That's what I say. But, uh... We thought he might have left something behind, like a body, maybe. Oh, I see. Mm, I see. Uh, you uh, couldn't prove a case without one, could you? That's right. And uh, suppose we knew where there was one. Oh, this is a lively conversation when a lady wants a drink. Come on, deputy. Let's go to the bar. Wait a minute. I haven't settled with Destry yet for that very good favor he did me out at Claggett's Ranch. That called for some champagne. The best. Well, in that case, we'd better stay right here, huh, Frenchie? <laughs> Yep. Come here. Yeah, Johnny? Tell Eddie to ice up some champagne and send it over to the table. Sure, boss. Wait a minute. Yeah. Then ride out to the place and see if it's gone. Huh? If what's gone? Oh, you mean... Yeah. Well, if it is, then Destry's done it. If he did, can I personally slap him in the mouth with my pistol? Hit Destry? Yeah. You wouldn't want to hit a dead man, would you, Jip? Huh? Oh, I see what you mean. Now get going. You know, Mayor, that fellow Johnny Kent reminds me of a friend of mine in Kansas City. He drinks nothing but wine. Every time he comes to town... I had a friend in New Orleans like that, only he was crazy about clams. Every time he'd come to town, he'd rush to the nearest restaurant and order a hundred clams. Oh, I, I'm sorry, I interrupted you. Oh, that's all right. I don't think there's much point to my story. What, what about the clams? Yeah, yeah, this particular time, they didn't have any clams. So they got him oysters, and he just about tore the place down. He was so mad. Mayor, uh, what's the point of that? Well, the point is he found a pearl in one of them that big. That's cool. No, no, it was bad. Uh, the oyster, I mean. It killed him. Now, who got the pearl? I did. Well, here it is, Destry. Champagne. Yeah, I'd better go easy if I want to do any sheriffing tomorrow. You might take the day off, eh, man? Hmm, might have that. Well, if I'm going to make an evening of it, how about you and me having a dance, Frenchie? Is it all right with you, Kent? Sure, go right ahead. You won't listen, will you? I'm not going to warn you again. No, it's all right. I still got your rabbit foot. You're going to need it. S say, uh, isn't that our fearless sheriff rushing over? Yeah, I believe it is. Tom! Tom! Tom, come here, quick! Oh, sorry, Frenchie. I'm sorry, too, Tom. More ways than one. Oh, that's fine. Oh, that's fine. I'll get back to the jailhouse with Callahan. I'll handle things here. Sure, Tom. <laughs> Sorry to interrupt, folks, but I got a little official business. You know, uh, Wash and me's been pestering you folks with a lot of questions about the former Sheriff Watson. Yeah. Yeah. Now, hold on now, hold on. We ain't gonna ask any more questions because Wash just found the answer. And uh, one more thing, all relatives and friends of Jip Hiller are hereby notified that he's in the jailhouse charged with murder. That's all. Yeah. Hey, wait a minute. My brother didn't have nothing to do with that murder. I ah, don't get excited, Bugsy. Jip ain't hanged yet. And he's not going to be. You get over there and turn him loose. Nah, I'm afraid I can't do that, Kent. Not till after a trial. Maybe by then he'll explain what he was doing just now when Callahan and the sheriff found him with Watson's body. Well, now, now, I'm sure Mr. Kent had no idea you had evidence like that. Yes, Mayor, I think we got a pretty good case. Darn near airtight, I'd say. Uh, good work, son. Good work. And just to make sure there won't be no miscarriage of justice, as chief magistrate of Bottleneck as well as mayor, I'm going to try this here case myself. Uh-huh. Oh, I see what you mean. So do I. Sorry I got so upset. How about finishing our dance, deputy? Oh, thanks, Frenchie. I believe I've danced to Kent's tunes long enough. Good night. Pause now for station identification. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. In a minute, we'll bring you the third act of Destry Rides Again. Starring James Stewart and Joan Blondell. 
Uh, meanwhile, I'd like to introduce a rather unusual young woman. She's had years of acting experience, yet she's only 19. And here she is, Miss Nancy Gates, soon to appear in the RKO radio picture, The Spanish Main. Tell us, Nancy, how old were you when you began your acting career? Well, Mr. Keeley, I was 12 when I appeared on a Dallas radio station. And at 13, I was booked for a theater dancing and singing act. And that brought you your movie contract? Well, it did help. But actually, it was my picture in a Dallas paper that did the trick. I came to Hollywood with my mother in 1941 for a vacation. And? RKO talent scouts had seen the photograph, and I was signed up two weeks later. And so the Hollywood vacation turned into a Hollywood career. I guess that's right. I've appeared in a number of RKO pictures. The Master Race and This Land is Minor, too. Splendid. And you'll be appearing in many more, I'm sure. Don't you agree, John Kennedy? I certainly do. If I may say so, it's easy to see why that newspaper picture got Miss Gates a Hollywood contract. And I'm sure if the women in our audience could see her, they'd be interested in her beauty care. Do you want to tell us about it, Miss Gates? It's really a very simple one, Mr. Kennedy. Active lather facials with Lux soap. You know, there's a real soap. No wonder it's a Hollywood favorite. Maureen O'Hara, the star of the Spanish Main, always has Lux soap in her dressing room. She uses it every day. You know how beautiful she is. Thanks for telling us about that, Nancy Gates. In Hollywood, hundreds of stars and starlets find they can depend on gentle Lux toilet soap care. That's because Lux is a beauty soap made only of the finest ingredients. If you haven't used it, why not begin tomorrow? You'll be delighted with Lux Soap's satin smoothness, the rich, creamy lather it gives. You'll find it leaves your skin looking flower-fresh, appealing, the way skin ought to look. Here's our producer, Mr. William Keeley, at the microphone. Our curtain rises on Act Three of Destry Rides Again, starring Jimmy Stewart as Tom Destry and Joan Blondell as Frenchie. Jip Hiller's in jail, charged with the murder of Sheriff Watson. But with Mayor Slade presiding over the forthcoming trial, justice in bottleneck still is just a joke. An hour ago, Tom Destry locked up another prisoner, Jack Tyndall. And now Janice has rushed to the jailhouse. Now, don't get upset, Janice. I had to put him in jail. But why? What did he do? Drove his cattle through Kent's property. That's trespassing. I see. It's all right for murderers to go free, but trespassers... Nobody's gone free yet, now. Oh, Tom, I wish I could understand you. Now, don't worry. I, I think we got a chance. Good chance. A chance for what? I can't say right now. Now, if you want to see Jack... Oh, please. Well, he's down here. Jack! Hello, Janice. Well, I told you I was going to bring our cattle through, and I did. I didn't pay a penny. I ain't gonna pay. Nobody's gonna make me pay. Jack, you're the most stubborn, ornery, mule-headed... Self-opinionated's a good word. Oh, I give up. Talking to Jack's like talking to a stone wall. Yeah, Jip Hiller won't talk and your brother won't listen. You know, if he was reasonable and paid Kent the money for moving his cattle, he could turn right around and sue and get it all back. Sue Kent? With Slade as the judge? Why, oh, you must think I'm really dumb. All right, all right, forget it. Well, anyway, Janice, thanks for trying to help out. Jack will be here for some time, so... If it's here, it's want... here. I got it, I got it. Callahan. Look, it came. The letter? Yes, here, from oh. Cheyenne. Oh, thanks. Yeah, let's see now. That's right. Wow. Now, here's something you might like to read, Jack. From a friend of mine. He's a federal judge with a hankering for travel. Huh? Now maybe you can see why I wanted you to pay Kent. Slade won't be on the bench. And if you can just keep from getting your fool head shot off until that federal judge gets here, I can get my convictions and you can get your money back. See what you mean. Okay. Okay, I'll pay him. Here. Here, I got a draft. Wells Fargo will cash it. Now that's your job, Callahan. Then take the money over to Kent, get a receipt. Yes, Commander. I'm a courier, a bolt of lightning, but silent as the night. Farewell. You'd uh, better wait for the draft, Mr. Callahan. Oh, <laughs> here. Now, come right back. All right, Tyndall, I'm turning you loose in your sister's custody. Wash, why don't you go home and get a little sleep for yourself? I'll handle things around here at the jail. Well, uh, I guess I will, Tom. Just wish Callahan had come back. Oh, it's going to work out fine, Wash. 
Jip's going to tell us a whole lot as soon as he finds out Slade isn't going to be judge. Don't hardly seem possible, Tom. Uh, who is that? Deputy Stavrogin reporting, Excellency. With the receipt. See? Kent signed it himself. Good work, Callahan. Please, not Callahan. Oh, I'm sorry. Anything special going on in the saloon? Very little. Mayor Slade is sweating in his jury. Two hundred dollars each for now. Three hundred more when they said Jip Hill are free. He's wasting Kent's cash. He could pack a jury for a lot less. That's what I told him. I said, just wait till that federal judge gets here and then you'll see... You what? I said, just wait till that federal... Oh. Oh, I presume you'll want the pants back with the badge? No. No, it doesn't matter, Callahan. It doesn't matter now. There won't be any trial now, Tom. Crooked or no. They'll be down here tearing this jail apart and turning Jip loose. No, no, maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe for once we got him scared. Hey, Tom... Mr. Destry, Mr. Destry. Oh, it's all right, Walsh. It's only Frenchy's maid. Mr. Destry, Miss Frenchy says she wants to see you right away. She says it's awful important. All right, tell her I'll be right over. Tom, you're walking into an ambush. They'll spot you out on that street no, and I, no, I hardly think so, Walsh. Not yet. Now, you, you just hold down the fort here. Well, don't worry none about me. I will. <laughs> I just decided to come, Tom. Well, your maid said it was important. Well, it is. Trouble? Nope. No trouble. I'm leaving town tonight and wanted to see you before I left. Well, pretty sudden, isn't it, Frenchie? Well, I'm like that. What, something happened or something? A bit of news, maybe? Don't be so suspicious. I'm just tired of bottleneck, and I'm going back to New Orleans. You miss me? Yeah, I guess I will. Or will Tyndall's sister get me off your mind? Uh, no, well... Well, anyway, I'd like to wish you good luck. Good luck on a nice trip. You didn't answer my question. Uh, I'd better get back to the job here. Tom, you ever been to New Orleans? No. It's a wonderful town. You'd like it there. How about it? Well. Well, what's that? What's it? Listen, that shooting's coming from the jailhouse. Tom, no, you can't go out there. Why not? Kent knows all about the federal judge. They'll kill you. They're getting gypped. Now stay here, Tom. Stay here. Oh, so it was all your idea, huh? Yours and Kent's. Get me away from the jailhouse, and I was stupid enough to... Did you get him, Tom? Tom, did you get him? No, Wash, they were gone when I got here. I fell asleep, Tom. Didn't hear him until it was too late. I don't talk, Wash. Callahan's getting a doctor. Is it bad, Wash? No. But it just makes me so doggone mad. Shot in the back. That's the way they shot my paw. They didn't dare face him either. Didn't give either of us a chance, did they? No. Plum took it out. Plum took it out. Wash, listen to me. I'm going to that room and house, and I'm coming back here wearing my father's guns. You'd like that, wouldn't you, Wash? Because the... Wash... Wash. Oh, no. Now, wait a minute, Destro. You can't do this alone. Now, where's the man that murdered Wash? Where'd they go? They're in the saloon. Kent's got it barricaded like a fort. Now, these men here, Destro, say the word and we'll all go yeah, with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. We'll go. All right, hold on now. As long as you're with me, there are two things I want. I want every freight wagon in town and a stick of dynamite. We can get closer to the saloon and wagons, and when we do, the dynamite will open it up. All right, now, come on, let's get let down to the through, corral. Let me through, let me through. Tom, wait. Wait, Kent's got 30 men in there. You won't have a chance. I thought you said you were leaving town. Come and on. And you wait. women, you women. Those are your men, and you stand there like a lot of sheep while they walk out to slaughter. Why don't you stop them? Go back where you belong. Wherever I belong, I don't pretend. You shut your painted mouth. I wouldn't wait around for my man to get killed without doing something about it. I'm warning you, you Jezebel. Wait a minute. Maybe she's right. Miss Tyndall. You talk about doing something. What can we do? I'll show you what you can do. Get every dame in town and follow me. All 
right, you men on your wagons? Yeah. All right, you head down the main street, bring your horses to a gallop, and when I throw the dynamite, cut in toward the saloon, start shooting. All right, let's go now. <laughs> saloon, Frenchie. We're going to burn it down. Besides, we got them all, all except Kent. I saw him run upstairs. He's up there somewhere. All right, thanks. Tom, no. There's a dozen places he could be hiding. Kent's here. I'm getting them myself. I'm coming up, Kent. Your hobby's still collecting deputies' guns. Here's a chance to get a couple. You're standing in my light, Frenchie. Johnny. Sure, I went upstairs, but I come down again. Tom, look out. Tom, he's down here. Too bad, Frenchie. Just am I too late to... Frenchie, come back. Tom, he's... He's... No, Johnny. Not too late. Frenchy. It's Johnny. He's dead, Frenchy. I had, I had to work out like this, didn't it? Maybe this will make up for Wash. Why did you save me? Why? Paint's still on my face. I never learned how to take it off, Tom. That's a wonderful face. You're in love with that tender girl, aren't you? Do you suppose she'd mind if you if you kiss me? Oh, no, Frenchie, I don't think she'd mind at all. Thank you, Deputy. So you're all settled down your ranch again, huh, Eli? Oh, it's your time. Been settled out for most two weeks. Well, that's good. That's fine. Things sure are quiet around here now. Yeah, they sure are, yeah. Hey, you, you see that hitching post over there? Did you ever hear the story about Sawtooth McGee? Well, everybody served that one, Tom. Yeah, I suppose, yeah. Well, I sure could make him up, couldn't he? Sure. Say, did he ever tell you the one Tom, about the guy that went... Tom, hurry! He's gone mad! Janice, what's the trouble? Oh, it's Lily Bell's husband, Callahan. Hurry, Tom, hurry. He's in there, Tom, behind that door. Stop him. Help. Callahan, don't you dare. Callahan, you're crazy. Oh, wouldn't be crazy. Tom, go in. Stop it. Oh, I don't really think it's necessary, Janice. I think yeah. Callahan's just finding his pants. What? After five, five long years, I finally find out why they call me Callahan. So you had a husband once, huh? And his name was Callahan. Well, the old regime is over. Has come the revolution. <laughs> Boris Stavrogin is now the head of his house. Come here, madam. What is your husband's name? Well, uh... Speak. Uh, Stavrogin. Hmm. See that you don't forget it. Now, how about a kiss, Lily Belsky? Why, Boris Stavrogin. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry, Tom. It sounded like murder, at least. Oh, well, that's probably just a Russian way of expressing something. Uh, speaking of marriage, Janice. Yes, Tom? I had a friend once down in Texas. He, he'd been so busy he never had a chance to propose. But one day... With that well-deserved applause, our thanks to Jimmy Stewart and Joan Blondell, who come to the footlights for their curtain call. 
And Jimmy, I hardly need say how happy we are to welcome you back to the Lux Radio Theater. Well, thank you, Bill. I'm mighty glad you had Joan Blondell on the receiving line. And we're happy to hear that the welcome mat is out for you, too, Bill, as regular producer of the Lux Radio Theater. Well, I'm looking forward to the job, Joan, but right now it seems a big responsibility. Well, I'd say you have everything it takes, Bill. You've been actor, director, and producer. I don't know of anyone in Hollywood who's better fitted for the job. Well, thanks for the kind words, both of you. And I'm happy to see from that smooth complexion, Joan, that you've been faithful to the real producer of this theater. <laughs> Lux Toilet Soap. I've always used Lux Toilet Soap, Bill. It's a wonderful complexion care. What's uh, Lux producing next week, Bill? Uh, next Monday night, we have a Broadway stage success that made an equally dramatic and exciting picture. It's Hunt Stromberg's psychological thriller... Guest in the House, st starring Robert Young and Ann Baxter. For sheer dramatic suspense, you'd have a hard time beating this melodrama of a happy family invaded by a strange and sinister influence, a conflict building towards a startling and extraordinary climax. Well, Guest in the House should fill the house, Bill. Congratulations. And while we're reminding our listeners to join us, there's another important reminder for this coming week. You mean a little matter of $11 billion, Bill? A little matter of $11 billion. Well, it depends on how you look at it. $11 billion is a lot of money, of course. But it's little compared with the debt America owes to the men who fought and won the war. I guess you're right, Bill. And America was never a country to Welsh on debts. Of course, a lot of people may feel that with the war over, there's no need to go on buying bonds. They feel that the job's done, so the debt stops. And yet the job isn't done for thousands of men that we're leaving overseas to keep the peace while we enjoy it. They're counting on us for food, shelter, supplies. And how about the cost of bringing so many thousands of our troops home? Well, it's just about the biggest, costliest transportation move in history. And when we've got them home, another job begins. What we've been calling rehabilitation. What it really means is giving those men a break. Giving them a chance to learn a trade, get an education everything that was promised them while they were fighting. And, of course, some of those boys we'll never be able to repay. No, I'm afraid not. We can never repay the men who died in this war, but we can see that their families are taken care of. We can see that the thousands of wounded in our hospitals will have the best medical care and the best possible chance to get back on their feet again. You know, they're having a bond drive in Canada, too, with many of these same purposes in mind. That's right, Joan. And in both countries, bonds are the safest and best investment you could find. How else in the United States can you get $4 back for three and guarantee your future and your country's future at the same time? You know, if everybody in our audience tonight were to buy one extra $100 war bond this week, we'd have more than a quarter of the total loan subscribed. Well, that's quite a challenge to your audience, Bill. Or perhaps I should say quite an opportunity. Here's hoping with all our hearts they take it. Good night. Good night, Bill. Good night, and come back again soon. <laughs> our sponsors, the makers of Lux Toilet Soap, join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday evening when the Lux Radio Theater presents Robert Young and Ann Baxter in Guest in the House. This is William Keeley saying good night to you from Hollywood. This week here in Hollywood, the motion picture industry begins its little known and little publicized United Charities Drive. Members of the studio colony have pledged a total of more than $2 million to be distributed throughout the year to worthy causes. All this, of course, is over and above the personal appearances of stars and the donation of promotional films and other services in support of the current Victory Loan Drive. Jimmy Stewart's next picture will be It's a Wonderful Life, produced and directed by Frank Capra. Joan Blondell can currently be seen in the 20th Century Fox production A Tree Grows in Brooklyn. Our music was directed by Louis Silvers. This program is broadcast to our men and women overseas through cooperation with the Armed Forces Radio Service. And this is your announcer, John Milton Kennedy, reminding you to tune in again next Monday night to hear Guest in the House with Robert Young and Ann Baxter. The Spry Treat of the Week. Spry Chicken Pie, tender, flavory chicken and bubbly golden gravy under a flaky, delicate Spry crust. 
Clip the tested Spry recipe from November women's magazines. And remember, only Spry shortening gives you mouth-melting Spry pastry. Get Spry! Be sure to listen in next Monday night to the Lux Radio Theater presentation of Guest in the House with Robert Young and Ann Baxter. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.